We're back for a good old fashioned cash game vlog at a new location, Peaks, and today's a special one. You're catching us on day two of a back-to-back -back bender at Peaks here. You're about to see us play yesterday, and then you're gonna see us play today, and there's a lot of crazy hands in store. Yeah, and just one quick announcement. We are gonna be in Vegas in November, pretty much the whole month for the NAPT Poker Series. It's gonna be a blast. We're gonna be firing a bunch of tournaments. Come say hi, come say what's up, and hopefully we'll bink a tourney or two. Yes, sir. Let's go. First hour or two go by and we're pretty card dead, so when I peel king eight off suit on the button straddle, this looks like the nuts to me. There's one limp, the small blind completes, and I'm gonna attack this spot aggressively. I raise to $30. The small blind tosses in that extra green chip and so does a limper, so we're three ways to 9-4 deuce rainbow. Checks to me, this board's pretty dry, and I think I can continue to attack on a lot of different turn cards, so I fire $30 once more. The small blind folds, but the other guy doesn't want to make it that easy on me, he calls. The turn card is great, it's an ace. I say it's great because although it doesn't help out my actual hand, this is a card that I can continue to bluff on and really put pressure on any single pair holdings. He checks, I'm not slowing down, I toss out 4 green chips, $100. Praying for a fold, but this guy seems curious still, he flicks in the call. I'm still feeling okay because a jack peels off on the river. If this guy was getting sticky with a 9 or some smaller pocket pair, I think a juicy bet on this card will generate a lot of folds and even put a weak ace in the blender. I stack out chips and slide $200 across the felt. I'm stoic across the table, praying for a fold, but I hear something quite the opposite. He goes all in for $350 total. Well shit. I feel stupid, but I don't want to look stupid, so I Hollywood for a bit, act like I'm kind of confused, and then make the fold, which shocks the entire table that I didn't call off for so little extra. This guy proudly shows the table 5-3 offsuit for the stone cold nuts. Definitely didn't expect that, and I guess that turn card ace was actually pretty brutal for us. First hand for me is 7 6 of spades, and we see under the gun plus one limp for $2. We are playing one two $1,000 max at Peaks Dallas, your classic 500 big blind Texas game. We bump it up to 10 big blinds, $20 to thin the field. And the low jack calls, the big blind calls, and the limper calls. So we're off to a flop four ways, which comes ace 5 4 rainbow with a spade. It checks to me and we just flopped an open ender and backdoor flush draw. Normally, we don't want to see bet seven high four ways, but this is not a normal flop. I think an ace will obviously call or raise any sized bet here, and I think a lot of garbage will fold to any size bet. So when this is the case, I'm gonna bet small here, $35. The low jack immediately comes in for the raise to 115. The big blind folds and under the gun plus one calls the 115. We're now getting lovely odds to crack something here. Let's make the call. The turn with now 425 in the middle, AKA over 200 big blinds, shout out Texas. It's the king of spades. We pick up the flush draw. Under the gun plus one checks, we check to the razor and he checks as well. So we get a free card on our chase and it is the 10 of spades. Yes, bink. Under the gun plus one, checks for a third time, and I choose a size that I think will be the most that an ace or two pair will call. So I go for around 75% pot, 325 bucks. This time, it goes fold, fold, and the low jack said he folded an ace, so maybe needed to go smaller there. But nevertheless, we start off our two-day sesh with a nice one. Popping in to show you this five person underdog fantasy pick that binked 50 into a thousand. You can do the same using code NGP, link below. And here's the reaction after I won. Oh my God. Oh my, I didn't even post it because I knew it wasn't going to hit and I didn't want to get made fun of. I think it hit. I move seats across the table and am immediately dealt ace queen of diamonds. I'm stumbling around to get my camera ready and we're already at the flop. Basically, there's a button straddle on, one limp, I opened a $30 in the cutoff, and the big blind and the limper called. So, three ways, we flopped two pair on ace, queen, seven, rainbow. Oh yeah, baby. Checks to me, I bet 40, and now the big blind raises to 120. Something you love to see. The limper folds, it's back onto me. I've never really played against this lady before, but regardless, I think the best course of action is just to call on this dry board in position, allow her to continue bluffing, or even value betting worse. Turn is a 6, and she doesn't slow down, she bets $200 now. We've got about 600 more behind, and this is probably the most interesting part of the hand. What would you guys do? Would you raise here and try to go for it all? I wasn't sure what the best move was in the moment, but I decided just to call and hope that she continues to blast on the river in which we can shove over the top. 
Before the river comes out though, this lady checks in the dark. What a gross feeling and it peels off the king of hearts. I'm pretty sure that she has exactly one pair of aces at this point because if she had two pair or better, I would assume she would at least consider betting the river here. So now the question becomes, what amount does an ace call here? The king on the river is likely a scare card, and if it was a smaller card, I think we may have gotten away with shoving, but here I don't want to risk our opponent folding. I wager $325 and we get snap called. I table our hand and she flashes the ace of spades and then mucks. Next hand for me is the Cowboys, Texas style, and the button straddles on for five. Speaking of Cowboys in Texas, I just want to say I've officially converted into a country music fan from growing up hating it in San Diego. Let me know if this has happened to any of you guys. Anyways, we open to $20. The button has ultimate last action as the straddle and is skipped. The big blind calls, and the button says this. Hey, Normally, I don't fold straddles. So we are off to the flop three ways and it comes queen eight deuce with two diamonds. Big blind checks, I put out a two thirds C bet for 45 and the button straddle immediately raises to 125. Big blind folds and it's on us. He said his hand was pretty trash pre-flop, so maybe he fluked into a two pair or something. I don't know, but it's too early to fold our over pair just yet. We make the call and the turn brings an offsuit jack as the pot is now $310. I check to him and he checks basically instantly, a sign of weakness in my opinion, as we head to the river, which is an offsuit ace. Obviously not a great card to see, but not a card I expect to hit his side call range pre-flop. I check to him again, and he puts out a bet of $75, which is less than 25% of the pot. We're getting an amazing price. We have to be right less than one in five times. It feels gross and value-y, but I think it's a side call versus weird line, speech play, and bet timing. I keep repeating the three value hands that would make the most sense to me. Queen oh, yeah, we have to eight. Queen eight, queen deuce, eight deuce. Okay. <laughs> Eight dudes. Texas style to take down kings in a $460 pot. I think I love country music a little less after that one. The jellos are coming out to play. There's an open to 15, a call from a crazy player, and we raise a small blind to $100. The first guy folds, but the crazy guy wants to play a pot. He makes a call. Flop is queen nine six with a flush draw. I bet small. Uh, 70. You don't know have here that, did you? Thank you, man. And as you can hear, he makes a call and also doesn't believe us. Nice. Turns a five of clubs, and here's where I get a little tricky. I know this guy's wild, I know he likes to bluff, so I set the trap and check, and immediately face what I definitely wasn't expecting. He shoves all in for $450. That's well over the size of the pot and certainly catches me off guard, but let's think here for a sec. If he had a made hand like a straight or two pair, wouldn't he want to get called? A jam lets me off the hook with plenty of hands, so this feels more like he's trying to force a fold out of me with exactly the type of hand I have. I didn't check the fold, even to a big ass bet. I calmly stick in a chip to signal a call. He asked me to go twice, in which I say sure, and immediately remember that Rosie and I agreed to only go once today and you can see it on my face. First river's a 10 and second is a king. We end up chopping versus king six offsuit. He gets there on the second board. Our read was right though, but would have been nice to stack this dude if we remembered to only go once. Too bad. My phone dies, so I rack up and get ready to cash out and we end up plus 600 on the night. On to day two, boys. First hand for me on day two at peaks, we're on the button straddle with the juicy king queen of clubs. There's an open from our arch nemesis Snoopy who you might have seen in some recent shorts and one call from the small blind. Snoopy is certainly opening wider than the average and with the call from the small blind this seems like a great spot to raise it on up so I make it $90 and the small blind decides to call again. Definitely surprising but not that crazy in these Texas games. I take a look over at Snoop Dogg and can see him salivating over the dead money. He stacks out green chips and piles $300 into the middle for a 4 bet. Nice little play from him for sure and with all of our history I know that he can be doing this extra wide. Against most players, even capable ones, this is just a fold. But against Snoopy, I don't know. Our hand is still very strong and this is a once in a blue moon type of situation where I think we can come in for the 5 bet jam. If we can get folds from hands like pocket 9s, 10s, jacks, 
Ace-5 suited, Ace-Queen, Ace-Jack. Those are all huge victories, and we win $400 uncontested. If he calls, well, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. I rip it for 1,000 total, the small blind folds, and we fade the snap call from Snoopy. Thank God. I try to act calm and collected, but inside my body is freaking out. I don't think I've ever 5-bet shoved this light before, and I really want to get it through. After about two minutes of thinking, he looks at me, sighs, and puts in the chips. We decide to go once and we're off to the races. 7-4 deuce, not a great flop, turns another deuce, and river is yet another deuce. We're stuck with king high, which simply just can't be the best hand. And sure enough, Snoopy flips over the jellos and we are stuck $1,000 to start the night. Well, what a fantastic start to the session. Oh my gosh. Thought it was a good spot and he just doesn't believe me. I guess that's just the dynamic we have with Snoopy. Hand one on day two for me is pocket four is under the gun plus one. I open to 15 and get called by Jack in the hijack and the big blind. Flop comes, king three, four, all clubs. An interesting board to say the least. The big blind checks. I bet $35 with middle set for value and protection, and only the big blind calls. The turn is the queen of diamonds, and he checks to me again. This is where it gets interesting. The pot's 115, and when I ask how much he has left, he says 173. And this puts us in slightly an awkward spot. I want to bet again for value and protection, but any normal bet size he might just shove on. So I first determined that I am okay with that being the case. If he flopped a flush, so be it. We're still live. And I now bet an amount that I think will get two pairs, single club holdings to chase. That number for me is $80. And he snap goes all in and we snap call. What we kind of expected to happen. The pot is now over $460 as the river peels off a red queen. We boat up and he shows ace seven of clubs for the flop nuts. Wow. And we find some lovely run good in a big pot. Hi guys, Rosie got some run good and you're about to get some too. I just played a $5,000 tournament versus Jonathan Little and he wanted to let you guys know he is giving full access to his poker coaching site for free, 100% free from November 4th to November 13th. Afterwards, there'll be a 70% off discount on Black Friday. So if you've been waiting to pull the trigger, now is the time. Links in the description, back to the video. We've got pocket fours in the small blind and this hand is already off to a wacky start when under the gun tries to raise to 25, but it counts as just a limp because he only tosses in one chip without saying anything. The next player raises the $10, I call, and now the under the gun player decides to re-raise to $25. I told you, it's some wacky stuff here. The next guy calls 25 and obviously so do I. We go to a flop of Jack Jack 3 and it quickly checks around. The 8 of spades peels off on the turn, and I see the under the gun player begin to reach for chips before it's on me. I still feel like I might have the best hand though, and I want to keep this pot small, so I do something wacky myself and lead out for $20. Under the gun thinks it's fair, he calls, and the other guy folds. Well, the river, if things couldn't get any weirder, is a 4. We boat up. We now go from wanting to keep this pot small to wanting to make it huge. This guy is holding two green chips in his hand, and I just get the sense that he really wants to bet them. I check with prayers that I'm right, and thank my lucky stars, he flicks in those two chips. Now it's time to pounce. I raise his $50 bet to $250, and I'll let you guys sweat it like I had to. Let's go! I table the pocket fours and he shows me pocket sevens. Looks like we got him to call us down light and we got a little lucky. Next hand for me is ace ten of clubs in the small blind. The button straddles on for five and the hijack opens to 15. The cutoff calls and I think we have a great squeeze spot. Late position opens are wider, there's dead money in the middle, and we don't want to have to go multi-way in the worst position at the table. We go for the three bet to $100, the hijack gets out of the way, the cutoff gets out of the way and the button straddle folds. Important thing to note here as we scoop in this pot, the cutoff makes a comment here about how it's the easiest fold ever when I specifically am the one that three bets. So let's take that knowledge into the very next hand dealt in which we are on the button straddle and see ace 10 again, off suited this time. The same player that made the snarky comment opens to 15 in the hijack. I don't like flatting off suit broadways. I don't think they flop super well. And we know we have an image that we can use here. So let's go for the three bet. I make it $60, it folds to him, and he calls. 
Off to a flop in position, which comes 8-4 deuce with two clubs. We have absolutely nothing. He checks to us, and let's use our image to try and take this down. I see bet for $80, and he goes into the tank on what is just the flop. <laughs> I mean, when he does this, I put him on all the pocket pairs, up to pocket jacks, and maybe even some better ace-x, like ace-jack or ace-queen. Now, every single one of those hands is ahead of us and he makes the fold, and I just love this side of poker. You know, I see people often associate having a table image as a bad thing, but I view it as another tool in our arsenal that we can use to manipulate pots and win chips. Definitely a fun back-to-back -back win here. As the night winds down, we peel pocket eights in the low jack. I open to 40 over two $5 limps. Everyone folds to the button straddle, who peels his cards and says, I shouldn't be in this one, but I'll call. Unsure what to make of that, but who cares because we drill the flop, it's king 8-4 with two clubs. I continue for 40 and he quickly makes a call. Turns a 7, I consider checking here and going for a check raise, but I think we want to just continue piling money in against this guy and not allow him to check it back. I bet 160 and once again, he snap calls. River is the 10 of clubs. Not exactly the card I want to see because we now lose to any flush draw, but because we have a club in our hand and the king and the ten of clubs are out there, a lot of suited combos of clubs are blocked like king jack of clubs, king nine of clubs, jack ten of clubs, ten nine of clubs, nine eight of clubs, eight seven of clubs. You get the point. Basically the king, the ten, and the eight account for a ton of the connected club varieties. All of that makes me think it's much more likely this guy has some sort of single pair of kings. If that's what he's got, I don't want to risk this checking through. He's got $550 behind. Do we bet big or small? If we bet small, we give him a chance to bluff, but it'd be hard to come up with some bluffs here, and it feels like he's going to have some value more often than not. If we bet bigger though, we get max value versus king, and some low flushes might actually just call rather than shove, which would save us some money in the long run. I settle on a price of $270, about half the pot, and the button doesn't like it. I love it though, and he ponders for a minute, and then one more minute goes by, and then he finally decides to go all in. Are you kidding me? What is going on this session? I am dead serious when I say that this was probably one of the best Hollywoods I've ever seen. I'm over here praying he puts chips in, and now he shoves in my face? I'm disgusted, and it's such a good price now. We need to be right like 16% of the time, which means if he is ever bluffing here or value betting a worse hand like a worse set or a top two pair, we've just got to call. To be honest though, I know this isn't a bluff, and I just can't find the fold. I stick in the extra chips, ready to muck, and suspicions are confirmed when he tables the good old Jack Five of Clubs. Always a cool sight to see when you leave the card room. It's right by downtown. Into the game for a thousand, out for twelve twenty. We'll take it. Thanks for watching, guys. We absolutely sucked. We got destroyed. I think we're in for nineteen, out for two hundred. So tough night for me, and yeah, we lost.